I'm Jay Garcia, and uh, today I want to talk to you about Gimbal. She's queuing something. Uh, can, can anyone, uh, can you turn that one up a little bit? Yes, we need some more gain on the microphone, please. <laughs> can we do that? Mine's loud. Here, take this one. All right, I'll take this one. He's got the big boy oh, one. He's got uh, the big boy what? one. It's just the, it's just the voice. It, might, it must be the one. Nope, it's the gain. It's the gain. Is that better? Whoa. All right. Super powerful. All right, okay. so everyone, once again, a round of applause for Jay for yeah, coming sure. up to talk about UI. So, um, once again, I'm Jay Garcia. This is my first uh, Rest in Tech talk. I feel that you guys have an amazing community, and I'm honored to be a part of this. Learned two things today right off the bat. First, if I go over the 10-minute mark, this young lady is going to throw a potato at me. She confirmed Steve. I think I heard you talk about that earlier. And Matt, dude, Doom, fantastic work. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about Gimbal. Gimbal is uh, part of a passion project that we have at our company. I'm going to tell you a little bit about ourselves and the impact that Gimbal has had for us and our customers. Um, so again, uh, I am Jay. I'm a co-founder of a company called Modus Create. Um, I am a U.S. Air Force veteran. Uh, if you ever catch me uh, over some drinks, I'll tell you about the awesome stories I um, had fixing F-15 fighters. It's fantastic. Um, I'm an open source, open source contributor. I am a very passionate technologist uh, to the point where I've taken on myself to write books, blogs, training videos, and so forth. And, uh, you know, talking about what we do is a passion of mine. I'm very happy to be here today. So really quickly about my company. Uh, we're nine years old as of March 1st. Um, we have 200 people in 42 different countries. We're a consulting company focusing on helping companies face the digital challenges that they have. So if, um, one of the things I like to say is that uh, disruption is at the back door uh, for companies who don't understand how to deal with technology and the rapid changes. So we help with things like change management. We help with adoption of new technologies and uh, methodologies and so forth. Um, and as of today, I learned just before getting in the car, we made Inc. 5000 top 10 software uh, fastest growing companies for 2020. So pretty big deal for me today. Okay, so I want you guys to think about one word, uh, impact, um, because everything you do should have impact. And for us, it's very important. Um, and Oh, wait, not that impact. Sorry, wrong slide. Um, no, seriously, performance impact, because um, today, when it comes to web technologies, um, it, Everybody tends to throw everything at, tech, at, at the web. Um, for those of you who have dealt with web development, um, even a decade ago, when you start a web project, the footprint was small. Today, it's rather large. And that impact actually has a massive negative uh, effect on your bottom line. Right? And this is something that a lot of folks don't think about. You just kind of throw something on the web and you expect it to perform. And chances are, you might end up doing something like adding a new feature that will have a negative performance impact. So performance, when it comes to, let's say, loading times, can uh, affect user experience. It can affect things like um, customer retention, signups, and so forth, which, again, has a downstream effect to your revenue and eventually hits your bottom line, which prevents you from investing back into your product. And ultimately, it boils down to the fact that um, there is uh, a negative effect on people. User experience, performance, is a people-centric thing. It's not necessarily just about features. Some, some statistics. Um, BBC lost 10% of its customers for every one second of additional loading time. It's a known fact that's been published. Uh, DoubleClick had 53% uh, abandonment when they had loading times above three, three seconds. And... Um, Pinterest had issues where um, their, their signups were decreasing. Um, and so what they did was they increased their loading time, or decreased their loading time, excuse me, uh, by 40%. So um, the real world impact for us was we had a project. Uh, anyone, anyone know what that icon is in the upper left hand corner, that logo? Unicoro, yes. So they asked us and they said, we have one major mission for you. We want you to help increase our user retention because our bottom line is being affected by poor performance. And they said, well, we don't want you to just focus on the experience. We actually want you to make sure that you can do so in a very constricted environment. Low-powered Android devices on 3G networks. Who here uses a low-power Android device with a 3G network today? Right. 
because we're used to modern technologies, but most of their customers in Asia don't have that luxury. So they said to us, how can you modernize your, our tech stack and affect our bottom line in a positive way? And we said, oh, geez, that's easy. We can figure that out. But the challenge we faced was how to measure this in a way that's scalable so that every time we uh, introduced a feature or push code through the software development lifecycle, can we measure performance so that we don't go over budgets? We call them performance budgets. So this is where Gimbal came, came from. The question becomes, um, how do we do this in a way that allows us to have our engineers do this in a scalable way? So Gimbal's a tool, essentially, that allows you to focus on how you develop your, your software from the web. Um, it'll look at your software, it'll look at your JavaScript, your CSS, and show you why things are underperforming. It's also going to make sure that if you introduce new features, that you don't exceed those budgets. So if you have a specific benchmark where you don't want page load times to go over a certain point, this tool is going to help make sure you don't exceed that. And lastly, uh, for the, uh, the up and coming uh, generation of, of engineers and those who like to grab free libraries and kind of external things, um, it's going to teach them that performance matters. And uh, there's a saying in the um, JavaScript uh, Lint world where uh, they said like Java, JS Lint will, will hurt your feelings. And so we kind of adopted that and we say, yeah, Gimbal is going to hurt your feelings because you're going to want to throw everything at, at our, our tools, you're going to want to throw everything, and then you're going to realize, oh, I may not have made the best choice. So, um, high level. Gimbal will make sure that all of your uh, file directory sizes are actually at the levels that you want them to be. It's important because file sizes affect load times. Um, now, there's this concept, it's a really nerdy term, the heap. Uh, that's basically the amount of memory a browser uh, has available. So if you have assets that are too large, you don't want that to be a problem. Also, it's going to use this tool called Google Lighthouse, which essentially for the engineers in the house uh, is part of what powers the auditing tools within Google Chrome, the dev tools. It's going to run this in a headless way. So it's going to test for accessibility, SEO, uh, PWA, so that's progressive web applications. That's ability to build web applications for those who are not available. Uh, uh, um, knowledgeable about this, to build it in a scalable way where you can go from desktop down to phone, and it's going to test to make sure that you're using best practices overall. And one of the big things that I'm a, I'm a big, it's a big issue for me is uh, general JavaScript and CSS waste. So in other words, you might include a library and you want one function, one feature out of that library, but you've just injected a second of loading time, hurting performance and ultimately hurting bottom line. So this tool is going to help you figure that stuff out. So Gimbal will work on the command line. It's cross-platform. It runs with Node and Yarn, but also connects with your CI. So it allows you to inject this into your workflows so that as your developers publish their features before it actually makes it to production, before it even makes it to the PR, you can audit what they're doing to make sure that they're not breaking your software and they're not going to hurt your bottom line. So. This is open source. We built this with the community in mind. It's extensible. It has a plug-in architecture. And it has a few uh, examples that you can use uh, to connect with the various uh, CI integration tools. So this is a, a very simple workflow. So that is, a developer is going to push a, uh, a specific pull request. And Gimbal is going to run. This is within GitHub. No potatoes, please. Um, and um, basically, uh, based on how the rules you've set up within your CI, it can allow you to move forward into the acceptance procedure, or you can reject it. Ask changes. Hey, Miss Developer, eh, let's not include load dash because we want some array function. Let's just create the function. This is an example of the audit. Um, this tool will also export uh, not only within the markdown space, but if you want to export reports, there's a command line switch to do so as well. So this is a snapshot directly from one of our tool, one of our implementations within GitHub. And it's uh, open source, so I invite everybody to take a look. And um, I'm officially done. So questions? Any questions? Am I on? Any questions? Banjo again. Banjo's like the, he gets everything rolling. Oh, one sec.
If this is a question about how to defend against viruses, I can't help you. Not viruses, but what about builders like Ionic or Vue or React that have a lot of bloat? How does Gimbal perform on those type of frameworks? So we actually focused on Angular, which, uh, and we are partners with Ionic as well, um, and we have examples with React. So I, before I um, walked over here or drove over here, I was just making sure that this stuff actually works because I personally didn't work on it, my team did. Um, but ultimately, yes. So I just did a simple create React app and I did yarn install with Gimbal and I did, uh, was it yarn run Gimbal audit and it squirted out everything I need. Um, and it, it works well and it, what's cool about it is the fact that like you have this concept of tree shaking and chunks and it will actually, you can set up rules to say, I would like this certain feature to have this specific budget within uh, size and performance. And you can do that with the, the YAML configuration. God, I sound like I know what I'm talking about. This is crazy. How long have you guys been working on this project? This project was probably two and a half months, and nights and weekends. And this is part of our investment in our own team. Um, and I, I'm going to submit another talk about R&D as an investment in culture, um, if, you, if you guys would like so. Because uh, this is one of the things we've done um, as, as, a, as a passion project, and it impacted our customers in a very positive way. Excellent. All right, everyone, give, give, give a round, big round of applause. Thank you.